They what? They certainly grow better than honey crisp. Though, but... uh, just see if we get anybody on board. And I want to remind me to save it. So, hey, John Clements, live here on Facebook. Today is Wednesday, April 14th, 2021. I'm with Farmer Mo and Andre. I was in the process of applying an experiment, some treatments out here, and looked at their Evercrisp on Geneva 41, right, Andre? No, these are Bud 9s. These are Bud 9s? Yeah. Really? Yep, these are the first ones we planted. Wow, hold on. I'm going to switch the camera. So these are Evercrisp on Bud 9 planted in 2015. So they're 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, seventh leaf? Yep. Oh. Well, then they're not as great as I thought they were. <laughs> no. Is the other one better? The, the G41s are full. Are they years really? Years? Well, but you don't like this. I think it's pretty thin. Farmer Mo thinks it's too thin. I mean, we count 100, 120 buds per tree. Spurs per tree. 100 to 120? Nobody's joined us yet. Everybody must be out spraying. Planting. Yeah, that's all right. Well, I still think it looks pretty good. Um, so, but 100 buds, 100, 100 to 125 buds per tree is plenty. Yep. Three feet, trees are two feet apart, two by ten. So, so that gives us about 2,100 trees to the acre. Uh, they're, they're pretty well filled their space they're about 10 feet tall so they pretty well filled their space i believe if we pick a half a bushel per tree but, we're at 1100 bushels so you've hedged this and obviously winter pruned it yeah. dormant pruned it like here yeah. and here yeah. what i'm seeing what i like is I think this could have been a hedging cut. Maybe not that. There's a hedging cut right this here. Would have been hedged. There's a yeah. There's a hedging cut right here, hedged. hedged up there. It's keeping these Evercris fairly compact. Yes. Yep. So we're not creeping out into the row with drooping wood because mm -hmm. they like to kind of tip bear. So I just see I'm seeing really you know this good bud density where they've hedged in here and that's often the result of summer well i don't when was this summer hedging mostly maybe some winter hedging too yep. but primarily the result of summer solstice hedging and i got one person watching that just i'm losing popularity but it's probably the time of the year because everybody's spraying all right um i had a thought well, the blind wood, yeah. yeah. Well, too late to do anything about it now. Oh, so Andre, we just, it, the thing is, you've, you guys have noticed that if you overcrop ever, well, overcrop ever, Chris, and the apples don't taste as good. Yeah, they're small, especially on the bud nines, and they don't, they have very flat flavor, little flavor. Huh? So what do you, tentatively, what's your thinning strategy here? I thin very, very easily. Yeah. And they tend, maybe they don't set well. I think, um, yeah, it does thin fairly easily. They don't set well, so. Um, but you don't need you don't need one apple for every bud here, probably. So you got to do some thinning to get the quality. Yep. Yeah. Not well, no, we have about 17 different trees. Not gluing those we planted this year. So the other thing with Evercrisp is red color development can be kind of yep. weak, especially I think with this very tight canopy, that should help with your red color. It should, but it has been a challenge. Yeah, and I hear, you know, it, the thicker the tree, the more challenge it's gonna be probably. Yep. Are you gonna use some Apogee or Kudos in here? Just some to keep them. I would, yeah, I would say yes. 
might help set them, help them the fruit on the tree better too. They were they were overcropped last year. Well, geez, for being overcropped, they've got a pretty good return bloom, don't they? The other orchard is overcropped. This this was less. This wasn't quite as bad. All right. Well, the I just. Ones might be more I mean, look at that. I don't know. That that couldn't have been hedged because that's too in the wrong position, isn't it? No, that was probably done. Clipped. Yeah. yeah. Goes out. To, just to keep it. We try to keep the branches when they're two feet about a foot out. So, you know, I, I like it when I, you know, I talk about when I prune, I like everything kind of flat. Talk about flat, right? Very horizontal. Horizontal. So, you know, I just thought it looked pretty good, guys. Thank you. Do you want to go look at the 41s quickly or not? Sure. All right, we gonna, can we walk? Yep. Four, it's 600 feet. Well, well, let's, well, well, you guys can drive up. I'll maybe walk and can keep the live going. Yeah, sure. How's that sound? Where, where am I going? Just right. to the top Straight of the honey crisp. All right. I'll meet you up there. I'm going to show, I'll walk up and show them these double leader trees on the way. You want to, you want to come with me, Andre? Yep. Might as well keep the live going. We're up to four people. <laughs> so Andre, what's, uh, what's going on here? These are replant. We left the trellis up. We took out some of John, your... Some of my test, test trees. Uh, these are, these are ever crisp on, not... Geneva 935. You ever notice an airplane leader. always flies over when you... Anyway, okay, Geneva 935. Double leaders. You ordered them as such, double yep. leaders. Yep, a few years ago we ordered them this way. What's the variety? Evergreen. We, do have, so. we have the challenge of having a dominant side and a weak side. These are not that bad, but in some of them, the weak side is, is really just a... Well, that's like up, up here maybe. This is much more Show me, get, yeah, yeah, a little bit. So, what are you gonna do here? So we're gonna, What's the plan, at least? The plan is, at least for a couple of months, is to bend down the dominant side, keep it from. We'll get that weakened up. Yep. To keep it from growing is to send the energy into this smaller branch here, and then bend them up. They're, these are planted at four feet apart, so we want them everything at two feet, ultimately. So, hope it's spread so what? So right. And keep them two feet apart in the same tree, and then two feet apart between leaders in the next tree. Uh, these will probably start to send up some vertical branches, and we'll put them back the other direction. Hold on, I'm um, to even out the branching on the trunk, and then and then because because if you pull that down, you're going to get branching going up. So yeah, yeah so you, that's going to be a almost a middle late summer thing probably. When are you gonna, okay. We've already started tying them. Right, no, I mean, but you're gonna have to work them all, not all summer, but till June, July, probably, before you, June, yeah. before you take your U-hooks and make your uniform spacing. Yep. Right? It's the middle of April now? Yep. Yeah, till June. Til June. Well, I'm just, yeah, trying to, okay. They'll start and, breaking pretty quick. Yeah. There's already some green. I wonder, well, I've gotten, I just, I'm thinking out loud now. Well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be doing right that. Now. Yeah. No, it sounds doing. like a good plan to me. I just wonder if there's any, any chemical, any chemical intervention would be necessary. Well, then that, that would entail. So yeah, how are you going to treat one and not the other? Yeah, I know. Well, you have to do it by hand, obviously. Well, even to, then, you still got to spread them just so you don't hit you. Yeah. It's conceivable. Yeah. That come in when these are tied down and they've started to grow and actually with a hand sprayer spray this one with apogee. Might not be a bad idea, that's what I was thinking. And with this, this one, I don't know if we need to do anything. If we were going to do anything, it would probably be maxed out. Yeah, probably. I mean, you can probably position this one. Get this one positioned. Right. Yep. Sorry, everybody. And then you probably, hopefully, these, these buds will probably, I think these will start to break. That looks like pretty good wood. Yep. 
and if the, once you start to get some bud break, you could spray with some 6BA Promon or Maxell to help keep this going and vigorous. So this one, you want to keep growing good. Yep. That one there, yeah. probably slow down a little bit. You know, ultimately in three or four years, I don't think you'd see the difference anyhow. It might be a lot of effort for nothing. Might be. I don't know what to say. So we'll do we'll do half of them. Sometimes I say it's yeah, just leave it alone and it'll be fine too. We'll <laughs> All right. That's cool. All right, let's walk up to the When we plant obviously we had to plant these by hand because the trellis was already here. Um, and so what we did was pull the trees last year. And then I came in with a mini excavator and dug a trench underneath the wire. And then we lay in compost into the trench. Um, and as, and as we plant, we cover the roots with compost. Um, and then back blade it with a half a, half a, uh, blade so that we don't tear up the turf too bad yeah well you don't normally work this way with plant where you the had time, add trees it's the first time that yeah. we've done this it'll probably so, be the last time i noticed uh, you were out here putting a little herbicide on yeah pre-emergent yeah care to comment <laughs> no, yeah. It's okay. you were putting some pre-emergent on I just, I don't usually put the three emergent, but we'll come in. Mulch? With wood chip. Now, if every tree was like this, that'd be easy. Then you, all you'd have to do would be to, 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 to bend them out. To the you can see the one next to yeah, them. yeah. And I, you know, don't comment. I mean, it's, it is what it is, right? But the, you got half the cot tree, well, not half the tree cost, because the trees are a little more, but planting it four feet apart. Versus two. Yep. We'll see in, in a few years how. Ah, you'll be fine. You worry too much. All right, where are we going? All the way to the top? Yep. Vikram Singh Thacker, Mr. Tugas Jr., yes. He was, he was the one, I think, who came to visit us from India. Remember that? Did he come here? But I, what's your secret to keeping this? And this is more, these are like two and a half feet apart. What do you think your secret is? Is it, is it the hedging? I mean, if, would you have this look without hedging? Probably. You would? Okay. So. I, I mean, you, you just set, I, I'm not sure you would, but go ahead. Set your eye at saying that you want the branches to be all temporary and and we don't want them much more, much longer than 18 inches. And then when the guys come out and prune, that's what they're doing. They're, trying, they're taking two or three or four of the bigger limbs out. Getting them at, it's supposed to be at four fingers. This one's a little bit long. Four finger stub. And you can see already here, there's, there's two buds breaking here, which is great. There's one here that'll grow like this, and there's one here that'll grow like this, and then we'll simply cut that one off. And um, it'll be flat. The one that's left will be flat. And then presumably, do you expect that this new flush of growth will be hedged this summer? Yes. So well, if it gets if it gets that big. This was this is a hedging cut here. That was so a that's, dormant hedging cut. That's where we hedge. It's like about a foot. So you're 14. you're keeping that. That canopy just only about two feet wide. Yes, two feet. Two feet from here to here. Yes. Now, if you had to do that by hand pruning, wouldn't that take a lot more work than the hedging? I mean, I'm, you still end up having to come in and hand prune. I agree with you, but it, I think it reduces your. I'm sure it does. Yeah. It makes, oh, yeah. It, a little, it, makes it easier because if there is blind wood or, or wood that's obviously got to go it's more obvious after you pitched some of, i mean some of them should have 
some of it was obviously wasn't. These these are hun these are honeys, royal reds. Yeah. Royal red honey crisp on these were uh, these are forty ones. These are forty ones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Boy, those those bud nine ever crisps look pretty darn good for bud nines, don't they? Wow, look at look at that crab apple. Yep. It's gonna bloom a little early. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not seeing temperatures for next week are kind of average. It looks like. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything too terribly cold. I don't know. It looks just just looks good to me that bud density and openness. I I don't know how you do it. My trees don't look like this. Vikram wants to know about four finger stubs in summer as well. I don't think so. We would we don't do they any don't, summer hand pruning so, on the apples. No summer pruning on the apples. Your hedging takes care of that. Right. Yep. Got enough to do in the summer. We do peaches and cherries. Right, and all right. All right, I don't want to hold you guys up too much longer. I just thought today would be a good day to do this. And, Ooh, these are all Evercrisp? These are all, well, half this block is Evercrisp. But this is, this is Evercrisp right here. Yep. G41 planted in 2016. Okay. Um, hmm. Do get some kind of, not quite the density of branching with Evercrisp as you do with Honeycrisp, do you? I mean, there's... Mm, they were pruned pretty hard. These were, these were whips. Yeah. Those were branched trees. These were whips when we planted them. So this was overcropped last year, and I'm not seeing nearly as many fruit buds in here. Yes, fair statement. Agree. I agree. Yep. Hmm. We didn't. We didn't hand thin. We, I don't believe we did hand well. We didn't hand thin adequately. Yep. So, and this is where you thought because these Evercrisp were overcropped that you just the flavor wasn't as good as it should be. That's right. So you got. Right. Yeah. All right. So this year you're going to have a light crop. Any thoughts about using the new product? Da, 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 da. A range? That's what you're supposed to use in the off year to kind of help oh, inhibit next year? No, inhibit no, flower no. bud development yeah. for next year. If we could get our hands on some, I don't know, but that's it's not labeled yet. Is it? it just says like, test label. No, I no, it's a range is labeled. I don't. It's just a thought. I mean, that's what that's that's what it's designed for to application yep. in the off year. Makes sense. To prevent flower bud development, being in, if you can get a hold of some, be interesting to because you're because because yep. you're gonna have I mean, you got a lot of resting spurs here, you're gonna have a lot of flower bud development, huh? It's pretty interesting how <laughs> how crop management, load management really affects going down the road. What happens? Why did you want to show me this? We didn't. You wanted. To. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I mean. No, it's a good learning lesson. Seriously, though, I'd, I'd think about trying some of that arrange. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you otherwise you're going to... Who, who makes the arrange? Fine. Fine. Fine Americas, yeah. Um, so let's presumably have a light crop here. The, the Evercrest will be large. You're probably going to not thin this period, maybe? And thin. And thin, if anything, if you got clusters. An apogee. And some apogee just to keep them. Yep. You know, I like bud nine rootstock in some cases. <laughs> it's a challenge with Honeycrisp. Yeah, but with Evercrisp, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? I thought they did. On the end. All right. Well, any final comments? Back to work. Back to work. Yep. No, I agree. I agree with you. All right. Thanks for joining. Whoever joined us, I'll uh, save this and post it to Facebook for later watching if you guys don't mind. You good? It's fine as long as our Royal things are the same. <laughs> All right. Uh, you heard it here first. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Best pollinator for Honeycrisp blooms late. What do you think? Waffler recommends Portland. I like, I like golden. Golden. The thing is, we most of our orchards have such a diversity of varieties here. For us, pollination is not a problem. 